Okay, so we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Okay, but before we uh, get started, okay, we, want to, we want to remember, okay, there's quite a few folks that are, that are out sick. Okay, so we want to remember them, okay, as we go before the Lord in prayer, we want to pray for them. Continue to pray for Barbara and Barbara and Sheila and Wanda. Okay. Sally. Sally. Okay. So we're gonna look to the Lord uh, for the Bible study. We're gonna pray for them. Okay. And so let's go ahead and do that. Reverend Coker, sir, will you lead us in prayer, please? Merciful Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. We thank you for this time of Bible study. We ask you to help Pastor Pope, help bless the teaching of your word. Father, we pray for these. Folks that need a touch in their body. We pray for Wanda, Lord, that you continue to be with her and help her. Father, we pray for our sister Sheila, that she'll help her recover and be with us. Father, we pray for Barbara, Lord, that she'll touch her and heal her of this affliction she's fighting. And Lord, we pray for Sally, Lord, that she'll work a miracle in Sally, God, to help uh, contradict the reports of all the doctors that are Telling her different things, Lord, and restore oh. her and help her. Yes. Amen. 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 Continue to pray for Melissa and Ellie. Amen. Is that right? Lily. Lily, I'm sorry. Okay. Let's continue to pray for them too, okay? Because I thank God. God is a God is a healer. He's a miracle working God. Yes. Amen. Amen. We know that we have the petitions that we ask of him. Okay, thank God we can have confidence. Okay, and uh, we also want to remember now, um, Easter is just, Resurrection Sunday is just, what, 12 days from today? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've been doing a lot of inviting. We want to encourage you to join us, okay? Let your neighbors know, people that you work with, people that have been out before. So make sure that we follow up on them, try to get them back uh, into the house of the Lord with us. We've been meeting people. Uh, we met up. We had a lady come on Sunday that her grandmother came here. Reverend Coker and I came. We were inviting in the neighborhood. We came to use the restroom and to make sure things were clean for tonight after we got done. And a man rode up on a bike. He said, I used to go to church here when I was a kid. I said, you know how many times we hear that? Yeah. So we invited him. He said he's going to come. All right. Okay. So just want to encourage you to let people know. Okay. And there's people that we've been trying to encourage for a long time okay, to come. And we're going to try to get a commitment for Easter from them. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, do a little bit of review. You remember out of chapter four, okay, the Apostle Paul was speaking of a steward. You know, a steward is someone who takes care of something, who's giving a a charge or a. I need to turn this down. Okay, I'll get it. Thank you. So a steward is someone who's giving, given a charge or a responsibility over something. We use the example of a stewardess or a steward in an airplane. Their responsibility is to take care of the passengers. Okay, so the Apostle Paul taught us there that a steward must be faithful. And we know that he was. God counted him faithful. He put him in ministry. We also use the example of... Timothy. Paul said of Timothy, I have no man that's like-minded who will naturally care for your state. Okay? And Paul did not, he didn't worry about people judging him. It wasn't a big thing. Hi, brother. Good to see you. And he didn't worry about people judging him. It was a small thing to him. People judged him. People in the Corinthian church judged him. He didn't really worry about it because he didn't really even judge himself. Okay, not that uh, he just let anything happen, anything go. That wasn't the attitude. Okay, but he 
uh, judged himself by God's word. He didn't use his own opinion about himself. I'm good enough. That's, that's good. Good enough for government work. <laughs> it shouldn't be that way. That's know. what I used to say. Okay, it shouldn't be that way with him in the ministry. You know, for, no. you know, you should, should have that attitude. He didn't have that attitude. Okay, he judged himself by God's word, not by his own thinking. Because we can deceive ourselves, and we do that sometimes. Amen. You know, as the Bible teaches us, you know, every every man's ways are right in his own eyes. Okay, and he showed them an example of humility. We're just reviewing, brother Ben, out of chapter four. Okay. We'll be in chapter 5 tonight of First Corinthians. Okay, so he showed us an example of humility. And he said, what do we have that we didn't receive? Okay, who makes us any different than anyone else? We didn't save ourselves. Jesus saved us. We received the gift of salvation. About the Holy Spirit baptism. We received that too. We didn't give it to ourselves. Okay? And he began to be sarcastic. If you remember, trying to get their attention, basically telling them, oh, you guys, you know, you got it going on. But us apostles, you're just a bunch of lowlifes, you know, in so many words. Okay? You, you're, you're reigning and you're, uh, man, you're just uh, so spiritual. Okay? It kind of goes along with what we're going to get into tonight. But we're just the off scouring. We're just, you know, the scum. Okay? He was trying to get their attention as a father. He wasn't trying to shame them. He wasn't just trying to dog them out and make them feel bad. But he loved them. Yes. Amen. And he wanted them to think about the way that they were thinking and how absurd it was. They were attacking him. Okay? He wasn't their enemy. Okay? It was by him and by others that the gospel was sp uh, spread in Corinth, and they were to follow what they had been taught okay, by him. There was no, not to be divisions in the church. Okay, we're, we're to have unity. Okay, it's pleasing to God when we dwell together in unity. Yes. We thank God for that. We can. Thank God. There's love. There should be love. Amen. Okay. So he, he uh, would send Timothy to check on them and to remind them of what was to be taught in the church and in all the churches. And he would come and deal with those that were proud. Did they want him to come with a rod of correction? And I'm glad Reverend Hall came. He didn't come with a rod of correction. Thank God. He came to edify. Amen. That was a blessing. Amen. 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 He would have needed to come with a rod of correction. He would have. That's right. But thank God, you know we 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 needed a uh, just an encouragement, and that's what yeah. the Lord gave us, didn't we? Amen. It was Amen. A, I mean, I like that a whole lot better than get corrected. <laughs> yeah, we do, don't we? Okay. Well, that's a, that's a definitely uh, a blessing. Okay. So he he uh, didn't want to come to them with a rod. Okay, but he, he left it up to them. Do you want me to come with a rod or do you want me to come okay, with love and a spirit of meekness? And it's up to us. You know, the Bible tells us to examine ourselves. Okay, if we would examine, our, if we would judge ourselves, we would, we don't need to be judged. So when we keep ourselves right, okay, we leave the door open for God to bless us. Okay. All right, so we begin chapter 5 now, okay? And let's begin reading in verse 1, okay? It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. And ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. Okay, so uh, if they were so righteous and so uh, spiritual, why were they allowing this blatant sin okay, to take place in the church? Where's the spirituality? Where's the righteousness? 
Where's the godliness? Okay. Now, this man, okay, was, quote, unquote, a brother. Right. Okay. And he was committing fornication with his stepmother. Okay. Paul was saying, the sinners don't even do that. The non-believers don't even do that kind of stuff. And yet you are allowing this to take place in the church. Okay? Look what's going on. What do you have to be proud of? Okay? They should have been sorrowful that this kind of stuff was happening. Yes. Okay, but they were not. Okay, let's look at some supporting scripture. Okay, James chapter 3. Why don't we turn to the book of James, okay? We turn there. I've got a couple of verses there, but we'll read some other scripture that goes along with it. I probably should have put more in there for you. But since I didn't, let's turn to James chapter 3. Okay. Now we know that he's talking to us here in chapter 3 about the tongue. Okay? And he's talking, he tells us, can uh, sweet water and bitter water come out of the same fountain? Okay? So we're full of the goodness of God. Why are we speaking incorrectly to people? Okay. Why are we uh, allowing bitterness to come out of our mouth? Okay. You know, God, God had, we have God's word, and God's word, he, he deals with it here. It's like a mirror. What does a mirror do? We see what we really look like. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Now, we get used to looking at ourselves. Yeah, yeah that's right. And we talk ourselves into believing that we're handsome or something. Uh -huh. <laughs> Other people look at us and like, I don't know how he got that pretty girl. He's... <laughs> okay. But the Bible shows us what we really look like. Yes. And sometimes that's why people don't want to read it, because they don't want to see the reflection in the Word of God. Okay, so if the Bible's teaching us that, okay, that we shouldn't have, there, there's not. Bitter and sweet water doesn't come out of the same fountain. When we have bitterness coming out of our mouth. That should tell us something. Okay, something's not right. Okay, so we should make it right. Now let's go down to verse, let's begin in verse 13, okay? Chapter 3 of James, verse 13. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Okay, it's kind of, Corinthians thought they were spiritual and wise and, I know that this is not written to the Corinthians, but it's it's really, brother, sister, it's common among all people. We all we all face the same things. We all have to contend with pride. Every person. Okay? Who is a wise man and dude with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but it's not from God. God's not causing all this bitterness and envy and strife and the Corinthians, this division. That's not spirituality. Okay? This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly sensual, it's of the flesh, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy, good fruits, okay, and good fruits without partiality, without hypocrisy, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Let's go now to chapter 4. Okay? And we use this a lot. 
Okay, let's go to verse 7, chapter 4, verse 7. We use this a lot. And he's telling us how we can resist. Now, if we're doing wrong, you know, the devil's just laughing at us. Because we're, we're sinning. We need to make that right so we can have some power. Yes. Okay? Verse 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Amen, Pastor! Yeah! Ooh, praise God! Hallelujah! Let's keep on reading. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. And purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Now, you know, we think about being double-minded. We maybe think, well, this person, one time they want to serve God, the other time they don't want to serve God. Well, that can, that can, that's true. But what about in the life of a believer? Okay, one minute, we want to love and we want to be a blessing. And in the next minute, we're mad at somebody. Hmm? We're not to be partial. We're to love all people, aren't we? Okay? And that's not always easy to do. I understand that. People are good to you. They do things for you. They're a blessing to you. But shouldn't we also love the one who can't really do anything for us? Yes, we are. Okay? Let's go on here. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judges his brother speaketh evil of the law and judges the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. Okay? There is one lawgiver who is able to save or to destroy. Who art thou that judgest another? Let's not be double-minded. Let's not be partial. Let's not, okay, be, be, uh, if God can help us, we keep our hearts. And we can be consistent we don't have to allow these bad feelings and things to come in, okay? That's just a, that's a tool of the enemy. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, let's look at let's look at uh well, that's good. We'll do we'll stop right there. Let's go ahead and take continue on here, dealing with verse one and two. Paul also tells them the one committing the sin should be. Okay, what did he say there? He said. Take it away from among you. Okay, we've got a good fancy religious word here. Excommunicated. Have no communication with them. Okay? He wasn't just somebody coming in off the street that didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. This man was supposed to be a brother. Okay? And, uh, you know, we understand people come, try to get saved. People are what they are. We'll get to that in just a moment. If you're going to not have any fellowship with sinners, where are you going to live? Yeah, right. We're always full of sinners. He's talking about in the church, somebody that should know better. Okay? We're going to try to clarify that. Okay? So this man was somebody that knew better. At one time, he was a brother. Well, Pastor, what are you saying? What? He's doing this. He's not, he's not right with God. Okay? But he was blatantly sinning in the church. And they were acting like it was no big deal. So the man was not ashamed of his behavior. Okay? You know, there's times that you have to cut people off. Okay? There's times that hopefully it'll cause them to look at themselves and repent. Okay, so let's look at some scripture that we have there. There's more than this, but... Okay, Romans 16 and 17. 
Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. Okay, now, there are people that have goofy ideas. Maybe they've been taught wrong, they don't know any better. Okay? Uh, that's a lot of that. But what he's talking about here is someone who deliberately is trying to come in and teach against sound doctrine mm -hmm. and lead people into some a heretic, some false doctrine. Okay, if somebody's trying to do that and they're causing divisions in the church by doing that, okay, that person is to be avoided. You understand what I'm saying? Not too long ago, he had someone that started texting the brethren because he got mad at me. Pastor's wrong, and blah, 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 blah. There it is right there. Avoid them. They're trying to cause division. Okay? 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 6. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our, of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourself from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which you receive from us. Again, okay, not just maybe somebody who doesn't know, but somebody who's in the church, supposed to be a brother, who's beginning to be disorderly and cause problems. Okay, and they're not they're not walking after the tradition. What he's talking about there, same thing that he said in Romans, it's, uh, after after the doctrine. Okay. Withdraw yourself from them. Second Thessalonians 3 and 14. If any obey, if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man, and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. Okay. Titus chapter 3, verse 10. And there's more scripture than this, but we'll uh, end it up. Next couple of verses. A man that is a heretic. A heretic is somebody that promotes false doctrine, wrong doctrine. Okay? After the first and second admonition, you warn them. Maybe you pray, brother, that's not right. You should be telling people that uh, it doesn't matter if they drink. I had one guy who was doing that one time in the church. I said, what are you telling people it's okay for them to drink? It's not right. I showed him scripture. Try to help him. And he kept doing it. Hey, you need to go somewhere else. You don't come in here promoting that. Okay? And finally, 2 John chapter 1, verse 10. And I want to use this, okay? I want to talk to you about there's some, and I think everybody here pretty much knows it, but uh, just because someone is nice doesn't make them right. Mm -hmm. and that was really hard for me to understand when I first got saved. I thought if people were nice, of course we're going to heaven. They're nice. Oh, Mary St. Clair told me, brother, he said, there's a lot of nice people in hell. Okay? You have people that come by. Yes, we want to share this Watchtower magazine with you. And we want uh -oh. to... Tell you about the end times kingdom. They seem like nice people. We're we're Jehovah's Witnesses. Ah. We're witnesses for Jehovah. Yeah. Ah. Okay? They're bringing a different doctrine. Yes, they are. Okay, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't Just because they're nice and they say that they're of God, doesn't mean I got to have... Let them come in my house and fill my ear with their false teaching. You're not doing wrong. You're obeying the Bible. Well, I don't want to be mean. You don't have to be mean. No, I, I don't believe that. But I'm not going to say, God bless you. I don't want God to bless what they're doing. I may say, bye. Okay. I don't want, to, I don't want, and God's not going to bless false doctrine. Okay. And I understand, you know, you may... You may say, well, I just want them to get saved. And, okay, I can, I can see that. And you may say, God bless you, and I hope you really get right with God. Okay. <laughs> anyway, you don't, have to, you don't have to give ear to that stuff. Mm -hmm. Same with Mormons. Mm -hmm. 
Well, we're the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. You're not the Church of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The Church of Jesus Christ doesn't believe that Jesus is just uh, another son of God like Adam and angels. And, and the, the Church of Jesus Christ knows that Jesus is God, the Son of God. Yeah. Yes, He's not some created being. Okay? He's not like an angel or like Adam or okay? He made all of them. Okay? There's not some other uh, scripture that was given later on in North America to the Native Americans. Okay? Paul wrote about that in Galatians. He said, even if an angel comes to you mm -hmm. and brings another gospel, let him be accursed. Yes, he did. Okay? So I don't care if the angel's name is Moroni, Macaroni, <laughs> Spaghetti, whatever. <laughs> it's wrong. Okay? All right, let's go on now. We're not getting, going very far. Into that. I'm going to try to finish this up real quick. We'll go ahead Verse 3, chapter 5, verse 3. For verily, for I verily, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already, as though I were present concerning him that has done this deed. So he's telling him, basically, though I'm not there, I've already come to a decision about this situation. Verse 4, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together, and my spirit with the power, and, and, and my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. So in God's authority, you together with what you know about how I judge this, okay, the spirit. What I would do, okay, is what Paul is telling them. You know what I would do, okay? You know, you know my spirit about this, okay? Let this man go. Don't fellowship with him. Don't make him feel like he's okay. That's what he's talking about was delivering him unto Satan. Let him go out there. And, and uh, don't don't act, don't treat him like he's a brother. And I I faced this. We had a young man that lived in the servicemen's home. He ended up uh, getting a, some girlfriend on the job, and next thing you know, he was shacking up with her. Hey, you got to move out. That ain't right. You got to make your decision. You're either going to repent of that sin, or you're not going to stay here. He ended up moving out. And I told the brothers that lived in home. Don't go hang out with him. There it is right there. Don't go make him feel like he's okay. He's not. And he, you know, it took a while, but I think she ended up dumping him anyway. Mm -hmm. But he felt shame about it, and he came back and got right with God. Mm -hmm. It works. Okay? So don't make him feel like he's okay. Maybe he will feel shame. Okay, and, and the reproach that he's experiencing, and he will repent of the sin. And there's some scripture down there for you that goes along with that. We won't turn to it because we're uh, kind of running out of time here. Let's go to verse 6 now. Your glory is not good. Though you not that a little leaven leaven at the whole lot. Okay, so their pride and thinking that they were so righteous and spiritual, when there is sin, it isn't good. They're deceived. Okay, we already had dealt with that a little bit. You know, we it's easy to deceive ourselves. Okay, a little bit of sin makes the whole thing wrong. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Okay? Verse 7 now, 7 and 8. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and Truth. So he takes this, okay, this is a, a Old Testament teaching that's, that, that uh, God gave to us to teach us about sin. That's what this leaven, it's not, it's not that God cared whether or not you had hard bread or soft bread. <laughs> it's, it's taught us about sin. And it, and it likened it to leaven. So take out the old leaven of sin, which is, like, is yeast. Okay, if you don't have yeast, you basically going to eat a cracker. 
Maybe if you put yeast in there, that bread rises and it's all soft and, okay, and it, it spreads throughout the, the dough. Okay? And that's what sin does. It spreads throughout. And this just spreads throughout. The whole thing gets sinful. Okay? So he's letting them know, brother and sister, to get rid of this old leaven of sin. Get rid of those things that were once allowed as a sinner. Because we are a new creature. Okay? We, we, we profess faith in Christ and his shed blood. And therefore, if any man be in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Now let's look at this uh, dealing with the Jews at the Passover. They were to get rid of any leaven that they had. Okay? They had the feast of the unloving bread. The Passover happened. The, the, the lamb had been sacrificed. Right? And we are to keep the feast of unloving bread without, uh, with our lives, okay, without allowing sin and malice into our lives. Our life is to be unleavened, is to be without sin. Why? Okay, just like they sacrificed that Passover lamb, Jesus was sacrificed for us. So let's 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 celebrate the feast of unleavened bread by letting our life be unleavened. We're celebrating the fact that uh, our Passover lamb was slain. Okay, how do we do that? By living a life without leaven, without sin. Okay? This was a time of remembrance, the Passover, the, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. There was a time of remembrance of the Passover lamb that was sacrificed. People remembering that during this Feast of Unleavened Bread, how that the death angel passed over them. And they were brought out of Egypt. Well, we need to remember how God saved us by his grace. Yes. And we should live our lives holy, yeah. unleavened, in sincerity, in truth. Okay? So the, the Corinthians were being hypocrites. If we are saved, let us live like it. Amen. Not, not like hypocrites like they were to be in. Okay? Well, yes, my, 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 uh, Passover lamb was sacrificed, and the death angel passed over me. Well, let's live like it. Okay? Jesus died on the cross for my sin. I'm no longer in judgment. I've got eternal life. Well, let's live like it. Amen. Okay? Not in malice and wickedness. If that's the case, then why are we still living like people who haven't partaken of that? We shouldn't do that. Okay, verse 9 and 10. Okay, I wrote unto you an epistle not to company with fornicators. Okay, this is what I was talking about earlier. We understand that there's all kinds of fornicators in the world. Reverend Coker and I were walking back to the car today. We saw a man standing on the corner. Big young guy, all muscled up, tattoos, crazy looking hairdo. I said, be careful, Reverend Coker. We don't know. I don't know what this guy's doing. He's just walking around like this. He had things in his ears, and he was talking to somebody, I think. Maybe he had his phone on him. You know, the Little earbuds. I didn't know that. I thought he was just kind of crazy. Maybe he was on drugs or something. I told Reverend Coker, be careful. We got up close and he looked at us and I said, hey, how's it going? And he responded kindly. And we invited him to church. He said, oh, yeah. He said, okay, that's cool. He said, my girlfriend and my daughter, maybe I'll bring them too. I said, oh, bring her. We're going to have stuff for kids. We're going to have candy and stuff. Yes. Wonderful. Okay. But he, he told me. It's not my wife. It's my girlfriend and my daughter. He's a fornicator. But he's a sinner. That's, right. That's what they do. That's right. He can come and get saved. Right. Amen. Amen. And if he does, he'll marry the girl and it will be right. right. Okay, so he's not referring to the old. He's not, re he, excuse me. He'd already told them, okay, not to company with fornicators. Now we can go back to verse five, okay, uh, and and maybe you know, the way that this is written, part of it was written, and then it, the writing was completed. Okay, it's not saying that there was another book written to the Corinthians before First Corinthians. Now there's one after Second Corinthians, but we don't know of one written before this. Okay, but maybe he's simply referring back to verse five, the way that he said it, that I've already told you not to company with fornicators. So he's not referring to us 
not keeping company with the unsaved because we must win them to Christ. The world is full of sinners. That's right. It's full of fornicators. That's right. Okay, we try to win them. We don't commit sin with them. We don't condone what they do. That is okay. But we do try to win them. But he's talking about, okay, verse 11, 10, but now I've written unto you not only not to keep company, if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard. Oh, oh, look at all the sipping saints. <laughs> well, they're not drunk. Hey, you're one drink intoxicated. All right. Yeah, they, when they pull you over, you're driving. It don't take a whole lot for them to get you out of the car and put cuffs on you. That's true. Okay? You've got some in your system, and it's very little. Okay? A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Okay? Or a drunkard or extortioner, which such a one not to eat. Don't fellowship with them. Okay? A brother. Is doing it. Somebody's supposed to be a brother. Is, is doing these things. Okay, because what you do is you're condoning what they're doing. And you're 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 telling them it's okay. It's okay. You can get drunk. You can fornicate. Okay, you can steal. You can be an extortioner. You're still a brother. Well, I don't want to be mean to them. It's not a matter of being mean to anyone. It's obeying the Bible. I'd rather have a person feel shame and get right with God than not have the courage to, to tell somebody they're wrong and let them die to go to hell. Okay? Verse 12 and 13, we're going to, we're going to finish this up. For what, for what have I to do to judge them that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? But them that are without, God judges. Therefore, put away from you, from among yourselves, that wicked person. Paul doesn't call him a brother. Call him a brother. Okay. Call him a brother. He said he's a wicked person. Okay? So God will deal with sinners. Can't we as Christians tell when something is not right amongst ourselves in the church? We should be able to judge amongst ourselves, brother and sister. No, and, and listen, none of this is done out of malice. We love people. Okay. And his, his whole motivation was to get this man right with God. And you know what? It worked. Yes. yes. We go into 2 Corinthians. We're going to see that this man made things right with God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Okay. So anyway, we stop right there. Thursday night. 7 p.m. We're going to be back here to worship the Lord. We pray for the services again. Easter's coming up. Invite people. Let them know. Let your neighbors know. Okay. 31st, 1.30 and 7 p.m. We're going to be here celebrating the resurrection of our Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you as our prayer. Pray for those again that are sick. Okay. And uh, let's go ahead and look to the Lord with this list of Bible study. Brother Collins, will you dismiss us please? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time together with you, God, and we thank you for the lesson tonight, Lord. And Father God, just keep us focused on you, Lord, and, and, and God, we thank you for, for all that you do for us. Continue to keep your hand upon each one, and I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.